G'day, welcome to another episode of The Vibe. Hey, what are we doing today? Well, stay tuned, guys, because we've got the Oh My Guy coming up later. Plus, we're going to check out the shed, and what is that, you ask? What is that? Well, Jethro, you're going to have to wait and find out. Oh. But okay. first, let's speak to the people from Oslite. Hey, what's that? They run a program in high schools throughout Australia. We have Matt Lance, he's the director of OzLife WA. Um, Matt, why don't you just tell us what OzLife is? Sure, OzLife is a seminar program that we run in high schools. Um, we cover topics such as relationships, self-esteem. Yeah, we try and make it relevant for the students. Like We don't just go in and tell them a whole heap of stuff. We try to keep it interactive so that we'll, we'll use videos, uh, exercises, competitions, um, games. All kinds of stuff like that just to keep it moving throughout the day so it's not just someone talking at you, you know. So what's the general response that you get from the students? The students are really good actually. Like at the start of the day, most of them think, oh, youth for Christ, this could be a bit off. And <laughs> so they start out a little bit apprehensive. And as the day goes on, they just really want to enjoy all the activities and things like that. Mm. At the end of the day, we have a React card that everyone fills out. And one of the things they get to mention is whether or not they learnt something significant on the day. We get about 85% of students saying, yeah, we learnt something that's going to help us yeah. with our life. Do you, people ever call you Bible bashers? Oh, maybe one in every 200, but yeah, we make a big point of not being like that. Oh, I remember when I was at high school, I had lots of questions on stuff. Um, some questions I was too embarrassed to ask, like, you know, things about relationships or maybe questions about God or things on drugs or self-esteem. And there was really no way to get good answers on that. And like in schools, they teach you about stuff, but the teachers only get to tell you what the education department says they can say. It's not actually there you know, their real feelings or anything like that. We bring in local volunteers and they get to share from their heart and from their life experience about what helps them in life and uh, hopefully that helps people involved in the seminar. So um, I'm sure there's some young people out there thinking, oh, this sounds pretty good, how do I get it in my school? How would how would they go about getting it at their school? You'd have to get in quick because bookings are filling up. But uh, if you go to your year coordinator or your chaplain at your school, if you've got a chaplain, and just mention the word OzLife, and if they've never heard of it, tell them to look for YFC and uh, we'll get in, have a meeting with them, set it all up, go from there. Cool. Well, thanks, Matt, for coming in. OzLife sounds like heaps of fun. OzLife is available Australia-wide, so if your school has a chaplain, go up to them and have a chat and see if you can have OzLife at your school too. Hey Jethro, I've got a question for you. Imagine you're on your deathbed. Have you got any regrets? Good morning, beautiful. It's okay, just kidding, I'm alive. Big question today. I just died, so that got me thinking. If you're on your deathbed, all right, you've only got a couple of hours to live, is there anything you would change, or is there anything that you would wish you, um, you maybe you regretted or something in life? Let's go find out what people think, so you and me, let's go. We have Martin with us. Martin, you're on your deathbed, mate. You've only got a couple of hours to live. Do you have any regrets or any things that you wish you would have done? Oh yeah, probably spending more time with my parents, you know, like getting out there because I normally snob them off when i got better stuff to do. And that's probably one of the things I'd regret if I was on my deathbed. 
Yeah, it'd just probably be nicer to people, friends and everything, yeah. family and stuff. Do you have any regrets or any things that you wish you would have done beforehand? Uh, if I had any regrets, it would be that uh, I wasted my life and squandered it on uh, uh, temporary material things. What is your name? Sherilyn. Sherilyn. Sherilyn, um, you, say, let's just say, for example, you're dying, right? You're on your bed and you, you got I don't know, cancer or something like that. Um, do you have any regrets in life? Any things that you wish you would have done, maybe? Um, probably wish I'd travelled around the world. Yeah. yeah. Give all my money away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd wish I was still well friendly with my friends and family, die knowing that everything would be cool with my friends and everything. Probably just to graduate and because I've always wanted to be a nurse, so yeah, probably just to graduate and get an education. So. Okay, we've got Narissa with us, and she's got delicious Scotty Smalt loaf and a chopper loaf as well. And it's very good. Um, but Narissa, I had to ask you the question. Say you're dying, right? I know it's a deep one, but you're dying. <laughs> you're on your deathbed. You're going to get a couple of hours to live. Um, do you have any regrets or things that you wish you would have done in life? Um, I totally regret crying in front of everyone when a customer came in and abused me at work. That was just totally embarrassing. But we've also got this special character here, Mr. Brumby. And I'm not sure if Mr. Br Brumby, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, could you answer this question for us as well? Yep. Okay, Mr. Brumby, um, if you did, <laughs> say if you were dying on your bed or you're going into a toaster or something like that, um, what, do you have any regrets in life? No, I'm really happy that I got to stay in here and be all hot and sweaty. Makes me feel good going home, knowing that I got to spend the day in this costume. Yes. <laughs> Alright, yeah, it's a good costume, I love it. You're dying, right? You're on your deathbed? Yep. Do you have any regrets in life, things you wish you would have done? Yep, I wish I had learned to adventure more, like do things that I haven't done and just live life more, like not stay home as much and stuff, go more parties, yeah. more bungee jumping as you said. Yeah. <laughs> just more everything of life, yeah. except for staying home. No staying home, no homework, no homework. <laughs> I wish that I tried tried harder at school so I could be smart not be and not be stupid and then if I wasn't stupid then I w wouldn't have to hang out with these guys. It would probably be that I haven't travelled as much as I want to. I want to go over to England and visit my family over there so that would probably be my one regret. Yeah. Just like to see my little boy one last time, make sure he's alright before I go and um, the rest of my family. Yeah. Okay, we've had a, quite an interesting uh, sort of replies. Some people had issues about um, their reputation, others it was just you know living life with their family, trying to get those relationships happening. Uh, it's a pretty tough question, but it sort of gets you thinking that life is precious, uh, it's important, and it usually has to happen when something bad happens, and that's when we start thinking maybe I should live my life differently. So, yeah, it's a tough one. So, best you guys in the studio. Thanks for that, Kim. Now, you might remember a few weeks ago, we asked you what you think about church. And, well, most of you thought it was pretty boring. Well, we went on a hunt and we found a church where they do things just a little bit differently to what you normally expect. So we're going to take a look and we'll let you guys be the judge. You've just seen some of the fun that goes down at the shed and joining me now is the shed coordinator, Chris. How you going? I'm well, and yourself? Yeah, good. And how did your role come about as shed coordinator? I've been wondering where God really, really wanted me in the church and a friend of mine, Sean, who's a, who's like a leader underneath me, he came up to me and he's like, the high school age students have been on my mind for ages and so... Basically, he said to me, we need to do something, and it just hit a chord straight away with me, and I'm just like, yeah, that's it, that's where God wants me. He wants me with the, with the, with the teenagers of this church, and this, so, there was just so much potential for them, and such a, a core leadership base that we just thought we need to grow that. So about three and a half months ago now, in, in June, we started up the shed. Um, we pretty much started it from nothing. As you saw from today, we've got about 50 people. Um, 50 plus people there now. So when did you start coming to the shed? Uh, I came to the shed the first day that it started and I've seen, I watched it grow and it's just awesome to see what God's doing in this in this house. It's just the best thing that has happened I think in the church. Um, the youth here, they're just so on fire for God, it's just unreal. 
it's just awesome because it's just for God and everything, just full on. Hi, what's your name? I'm um, Tabitha. And why do you go to the shed, Tabitha? Um, well, because I just I love being with all my friends over there, <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, I just love being there for God, and it's a really fun way to learn about God, and um, it's just good. Yeah, I love it. Well, it's like it's fun, and it's for us, so therefore, like we learn more from it, and it's easy to understand. And the games that you guys play, it, what's the reason behind having them? The reason is. Firstly, we wanted to, to enjoy church and we think playing games is a way to enjoy it, but it's also a way of when people come into the church, they don't always know people, and so we split them up into four groups, which makes it a bit smaller, and then when someone new comes in, you know, it's automatically these people are, are, are going to be saying, are they coming into our group? We want them to come into our group because they want to be bigger and they want to be able to win games. And so it automatically gets them drawn into a group and, and interacting with people and relationships are formed so it's really a, a relational tool. How personally rewarding has it been for you? Incredibly, yeah. Just sometimes you get tired because you're doing so much work but the rewards just outweigh it and you just feel refreshed. Every time, every Sunday it's like Saturday night and going, we've got the shed tomorrow. And it's just refreshing and I feel revived from it and same on a Friday night when I know I'm going to be there. And just seeing them the way they, they are in the like we call it the mosh, which is praise and worship, and just seeing them in there, it's very rewarding. Thanks very much for having us, Chris. It was great to come down and see what the shed's all about. Now, good luck for the future. No, any time. Thank you for the opportunity. And if you want more details about the shed and all the fun stuff that they do, you can contact us at thevibe2002 at hotmail.com and we'll give you more information. Welcome back to The Vibe. We hope you enjoyed that commercial break as much as we all did and we hope you definitely enjoy this next segment a whole lot more. As you know, we always feature a band on The Vibe, so in keeping with that tradition, we've got one lined up for you right now. Thanks guys. I'm here at Giardini's and we're just going to go inside of this cafe because we're going to be speaking with Chester Stay at Home, so great stuff. Let's go. Excuse guys. Yeah, no worries. A dog's life when you judge by the color of your skin. The wrong place to bring up your children. When they cry out from hunger and you can't let them in, it's a shame. Thanks, guys, for uh, agreeing to come on the show today. But first of all, I want to ask you why the name Chester Stayed Home? Trap could answer that. No, I'm glad you asked that question because. Uh, it's exactly what we really wanted to capture on the, you know, in the mood of the album was uh, was that kind of laid back feel. So, <laughs> what? So, what sort of style would you say that you guys would sort of bring about in the in the group Chester Stay at Home? Um, I think it's a real mix of styles because of where we come from, all of us. And uh, I'm I'm from a real uh, pub rock blues background for years and years, and. Um, so that's going to come through my playing guitar playing. Trav's more, uh, I suppose, uh, what would you call your playing? <laughs> I know what I'd call it, but what would you call it? I'd call it more, more pop gospel uh, sound. Gav's more of an 80s man. He's, uh, it's not true. No, it is true, actually. Spandau Ballet was one of my biggest uh, influences. I like you already. Yeah, it's good, mate. And I, I studied jazz for five years as well. So. What would you say... Um, your biggest inspiration would be for in writing the lyrics. I mean, did you do it all together, and how long did it take? And you know, just a bit of the journeys of where you got to now. I guess we we wrote the album uh, over 
a couple of years. It's not just been written for that album. We already had a, a particular collection of songs that we wanted to put together. So uh, that's that's kind of how the album got formed. Uh, Mark and I only wrote one of the tunes together. The rest were written individually. Um, and arranged together. And arranged yeah. together. Yeah. Right. That so, was fun. But I think lyrically, we um, the songs really, that's where the strength of them is for us, is uh, is the depth of the lyrics. For us, I mean, you know, saying that, I don't, I don't mean that to sound, you know, whatever, tried or whatever, but it's, it's uh, the stories from our experience, stories from our past and things like that. And, and I suppose that's what it is, story-based lyrics, that's what I would call it. You know, each, each song there has a, a definite story about it except probably one of them. Has no story at all. <laughs> when Trav and I started this off uh, writing, and that was before Gab joined, we, um, we basically said if one of our songs could ever touch anyone and, and move them in any way, then it, it's been worth it. You want to have something different. You want to have something different to, to what everything else that's going on out there. Mm. Not trying to copy, but have something original I, we, that, I think that's what we've tried to come and put together mm. is an original sound something you can't really put your finger on we've been working on a different face you know to pull <laughs> like uh, the clenching of nostrils is a is a good one where if you can if you can if you can clench your nostrils and no, but all those other things besides the face pulling thing. Fun. You know, the face I point. think fun is the key to what we do. Absolutely. You probably noticed a little bit of that. Gav, you mean you what do you, what do you think? I think yeah, oh, thanks, we, Gav. thanks Gav. Anyway. So uh, I I'd, I'd say that would be about it really. Uh, that, that, that about sums it up. <laughs> And now to talent of a completely different kind, the Oh My Guy. Oh boy. Let's see, he's ironed at Wave Rock. Yep. He's thrown a piano off a bridge. Yep. And he's also done extreme bar tubbing in the city. And he also tried to fix a leaky tap with the main still running. <laughs> and let's not forget the time that he tried to raffle off that car. Oh, well, we can't forget that one. Well, let's see what other antics he has in store. Hi, I'm Matt Parker and welcome to Oh My.
Well, thanks for watching another episode of The Vibe. Now, if you have any comments or questions regarding anything that's been on the show, then please write to the email address below. But for now, we've got some footage of some local skate parks to take us out. Call CTV Perth soon to find out how you can become a part of this extraordinary do-it-yourself television opportunity.